Hello, I'm Gene Ovenick. I'm here today with uh, Hoof Care Today. I'm going to add some more information uh, about hoof balance for you. Uh, the EOPO has given us a good roadmap to help us understand where hoof balance needs to exist from front to back. And uh, the, the feral horses have given us also uh, that same roadmap in general. So I, I think it's important that you understand a little bit about how the, the hoof is designed to maintain itself. And the wild horses have given us that information, at least in part. The thing is that the, that the foot is uh, designed to take care of itself by the way it wears from the front side. And uh, it, the, the hoof wall will wear back to the sole and slightly into the sole to establish that front margin from the widest part forward. At the same time, the foot is designed to wear itself to the level of the sole and it seeks the same equal proportion in the back of the foot. And the sole is the governing body with that. And from side to side, the wall is worn equally to the level of the sole, which is the same thickness as the uh, under each side of the coffin bone. With that understanding, we realize that the sole actually is the part of that structure that regulates the wear of the hoof wall. And by doing so, it regulates the strain to the attaching tissue that connects the coffin bone to the upper bones through the pastern. And with that, the hoof has uh, been able to maintain this equilibrium or this balance from front to back around its widest part by the way the hoof wall wears itself away. At the same time, in wearing the back part of the foot, the frog engages the ground to satisfy the need of blood circulation, absorption of shock through the digital cushion and the rest of the soft tissue in the back of the foot. It's a very intricate uh, mechanism when you look at it uh, in how its management is taken care of. We, on the other hand, have historically looked at the outside of the foot and put more precedence on the hoof wall. And because of that, the hoof wall is, is the part of the foot that can distort, can lose its relationship to the coffin bone and to the internal components. And with that is uh, because of the fact that we look at hoof capsule distortions and realize now that they're an intricate part of how, why horses become lame, why they become less than adequate performance horses and animals and stuff. And I think that as we try to sort out the problems that we've had, we now realize that the hoof capsule is that part that, we, that we've put so much precedence on and really we need to look at balance from an entirely different perspective. So the, the thing is, how does this relate to our domestic horses? First of all, uh, the wild horses are not ridden and they, they don't do the kind of things that we ask our horses to do in the form of uh, turning circles, jumping fences, uh, running at high speeds and, and all of a sudden changing directions. And the thing is, the foot is designed to accept some of those disciplines and some of those uh, uh, stresses and strains, but not at the capacity that we're asking our horses today. The important thing is, is that that we need to understand is that the hoof wall that we've always looked at as the almighty grail is less important than what we think. And in fact, it is the, it is the part of the hoof that uh, becomes disoriented from the sole, creates leverage that in turn creates a potential for pathology to the internal components. I think it's important to understand the ratios on the bottom of the foot, the balance that we now find is most intricate to the internal components of the foot it is critical. Now, whether you're trimming the horse and leaving him barefooted, whether you're wearing boots or whether you're putting shoes on, how the foot is prepared is the most critical part of whatever you decide to do as far as protection to the internal components. Mm -hmm.